All right. Hello, hello. Hello, hello friends. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> what the hell, guys? <laughs> Wow, that was great. That I was literally great. just asked, are you all ready? Yeah, you said that, and I said, yeah, and then I took a bite of food. <laughs> <laughs> a mistake. In Oops. what world was that, like, a cue for now is a great time to take a bite? <laughs> that is the In the best world time. where I'm a dumbass. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, I was feeling really good for, about myself because, like, the update thing came up for OBS as I opened up, and it was like, I'm not gonna update it five minutes before stream this time. <laughs> it is you not. Have a brain cell. It is not dumb bitch hours right now. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> oh, it is always dumb bitch hours, but we're like slightly less dumb bitch at the moment. Uh. <laughs> I'm Kels, I am the resident dumb bitch, and uh, <laughs> I'm the one behind the controller. I play Dionosuke Naruhodo and no one else. Uh, actually, no, that's not true. I play the ba Bailiff Elmo. Uh, <laughs> on rare occasions. Exactly. Um, so, Sesame Street, you can hit me up. Uh, <laughs> the next voice of Elmo. There we go. Oh. <laughs> All right, someone else want to go? Oh, no. Okay, hi. <laughs> I usually really go last, so I'm just going to wait. Uh, <laughs> I voice act sometimes, and um, I, I have no brain cells. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yes. Um, of course, my name is Lemur. Um, I play a shit ton of people. Um, <laughs> and I just realized, we didn't talk about this last stream um, when it was just us. But uh, do you have any further mysterious backstory for me to include? Oh, that's right. Shit. Um... <laughs> Remember, like, this was last week at this yes. point. Yes. But what, what even was the bullshit that you came up for me? Oh. I don't even remember. <laughs> um, you won a game of golf against Tiger Woods. Yeah, that's it. Um, Because you didn't want the backstory of the there's a child locked in your basement, which I still don't understand why. Let me just put that out there. Um, oh, yeah. And of course, that being the 26-year-old bird that is screaming in the background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for those of you who are concerned, please don't, don't call, call the police. Yeah, you know. <laughs> it's <laughs> a bird. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's see. Your backstory this week um, is that you were the inspiration for... Not the person in Ratatouille, but the rat in Ratatouille. <laughs> that's, that's right. Congratulations. <laughs> uh you are Remy. <laughs> you have become Remy. That is I Remy. bet that no one on chat and, you know, in the chat knew that that was based off a true story, but... <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> You're crying? Oh my god. <laughs> I feel like I did really good with this one. Um, <laughs> for not playing in and out, I'm very proud. Um, <laughs> oh my well, god. They're crying. <laughs> <laughs> that was a wonderful gift. Thank you for giving that to me. You're very welcome. Tune in next stream to find out the next part of Lamer's backstory. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't expect them to be all this nice. <laughs> Hmm. All right. You so we be a rat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um. So we've decided to skip pre-show banter tonight because we think we're at the end of the case, and wrapping up the case for some reason takes three and a half days. So mm -hmm. we're gonna just go in tonight and finish it up, and then we'll have post-show banter, or we'll just defuse bombs, or you know. Etc. 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 Um, to draw out the time in case this really ends real quick. Um, no, it never does. It never, absolutely never. Um, we have to have the hour and a half of us talking out in the hallway. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't realize it was water cooler simulator. Um, anyways, so the what happened last stream? We got out of the summation examination by pointing out that the Garadebs would totally open the window to clear out the fire. Von Zeeks uh, claimed that the window opens in such a way that anything thrown out of it couldn't possibly land across the street, but Patrice's rose clued us in to the truth that Roly moved the crime scene from just outside the window in his jurisdiction to the other side so that someone else would have to do his job. 
Our current hypothesis is that Joan threw the knife and book out the window during the marital spat and it landed in the victim's back, making her guilty of reckless endangerment. So it was an all so it was all an accident that a lazy policeman accidentally covered up. Chat did not say this, but as a reminder on this stream, we are a cab. Uh our British racism, racism count is 28. Our hallowed chalice count is 8. Is that really only how many? I mean, I say only, but that's like a yeah. horrific number. Like, that's two sets of uh, wine glasses that this man has just poured and thrown. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, we were going through a lot more cups of coffee, so. That's true, yeah. Because that one guy he wouldn't stop like... drinking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but let's be honest. 10 a.m. trial, I was less concerned about the guy that was drinking coffee like he was addicted to it and more concerned about the dude that keeps pouring wine at 10 a.m. Yeah. I get that it's 5 o'clock somewhere, but <laughs> is now the time or place? Ben Zeke's is a white mom. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. The original wine mom. <laughs> Look, he brings in the fancy glasses, and then um, at the end of the day, he goes home to those like uh, wine glasses you can get with the little wine sayings on them. Like today, uh -huh. it's Winer Day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it has to have some weird ass quotes in mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, he's wine. all about the aesthetics and like out in the wild. Exactly. But, but when he's home, out in he's the a white lady. Be an animal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, we do know that the man has set people on fire, probably. So, yeah. yeah. Anyways, shall we start? Oh, excuse me. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, quite a startling revelation, I must say. Whoever thought of a third party translating the transplanting the entire scene of a crime like that? I did. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Indeed, my lord. Nevertheless, there are some immutable facts here. Principally, that the accused, Mr. Soseki Natsume, is the only person who could have possibly have committed this oh crime. Oh my god, Wrong. you dumb bitch. Wrong! Bitch! No! I disagree. Now that we know the true scene of the incident, there is someone else. Another person who could be responsible for the knife in the victim's back. Forgive me for being presumptuous. Say it, girl. Just but I believe the pro <laughs> but I believe the prosecution is probably aware of this possibility already. Ah. Lord Van Zeeks, is this true? Hmm, no. <laughs> Very well. The defense is on the other side, like, doing the fiancé dance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Name the person, if you will, and if further investigation is warranted. <laughs> the prosecution Ziggs, has no objection to the trial continuing. Ben Ziggs, if you aren't going to name another Japanese person as the culprit, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> You would. <laughs> don't oh. don't give him any ideas. Damn. Not accusing us. All right. Who's the other person that could have committed the crime? Unfortunately, it is juror number like four. The defense once again likes to request the cross examine of a new witness, my lord. I feel like I said that in the wrong intonation, my lord. My lord. Yes, my lord. My lord. Lady. My lord. Once again. My assistant made the same request earlier, because I was too much of a dumbass to do it, in order to finally reveal the truth about this case. It's imperative that we cross-examine juror number four, Mrs. Joan Garadeb. Hell yeah. I believe this is me, me. Oh, dearie me. <laughs> Objection. Jesus Christ. That's right, Jesus. I always subject to everything. That request has already been denied. <laughs> but the situation is very different now. This is Garadev. Answer me this. The situation is very different now. I, a man with the penis, am asking. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> 
sorry. Oh. Uh, what do you want now, you little toad? At the time of the incident, you were engaged in a violent argument with your husband, Mr. John Garrida. In the course of the argument, a minor house fire was ignited. And to clear the smoke from the room, your husband opened a window that looks over Briar Road. Well, what of it? You threw this book at your husband when he was cornered with his back against the window. Upon striking the pane of the open-top hinged casement window, the book plummeted directly down, finding its way to what we now know to be the true scene of the incident. Yes, as I, and as I said, what of it? During the argument, you were beside yourself with rage. As such, you threw not just books, but anything you could lay your hands on. So, let me ask you one more time, Mrs. Garadab. This knife, the one removed from the victim's back? Have you really never laid eyes on it before? Ah! Cheek jiggle. <laughs> <laughs> Her face jiggles so much and I'm a little jiggle. concerned by it. I'm not jiggle, gonna jiggle. lie. It falls. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know the rest. The rest of the, I don't even know the next line. Um, I don't jiggle jiggle. It folds. Uh, I don't recall it. Seriously? <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Um, am I supposed to remember everything I picked up and threw at my husband? I mean, ideally, you didn't throw that much, so yeah. Yeah. I mean, we didn't uh, see everything, like, your entire house on the sidewalk, so... Yeah. Um, and anyway, the man over there in all of that regalia said members of the jury didn't testify, didn't he? Conveniently, yes. No, I have no recollection of saying that at all, juror number four. Wow. Are, are we going to really go into bitch hours right now? Yes. I so love this. Bitch era. Hours. I love it. <laughs> bitch era. Bitchy slutty, slutty era, yes. <laughs> I mean, look, he can do the Beyonce dance with us now. Yes. All the single ladies. <laughs> yes. Put your hands up. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> well her hand wasn't up so I'm not going to take that as she is single make no mistake you jurors are not special in any way you are not immune to the judicial process if you know something about this knife madame let the truth come out But that's just a common o a common or garden knife. I thought it said common o garden. I was trying to figure out what that was. Uh, it could have come from anywhere. Like what? Uh, <laughs> we have several like that at home. If if one went missing, how'd you expect me to know? Oh. What's that? Are you joking? I forgot. I, this happens to me all the time. I always forget when I'm the judge. Um, <laughs> what are you saying, please, Mr. Miss Garrida? <laughs> I'm gonna assume. Now you listen to me. I, I refuse to believe all this nonsense. I couldn't bear the thought that I injured someone. Do you hear? I couldn't bear it. Oh, the poor woman. So... Yes, I want evidence. I want to see hard evidence if you're going to insist on this being my fault. 
you're going to have to prove to me that I threw that knife if that's what you think. I mean, we kind of have to prove to everybody that we think yeah. that you did. Yeah. Uh -huh. Come along now. Chop, chop. Do your worst. Um, well... She feels pretty confident. Yeah, we don't really have hard evidence right now. Uh, well, Mr. Naruhoto? If... If I had evidence like that, believe me, I would have thrown it at her already! Like the way she threw that knife? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> then take the stand, Joror. No. <laughs> the prosecution does not object to the defense's request to cross-examine this woman. Thank you, Lord Von Zeeks. I will that refrain Supreme, from Lord calling Pensy. AA. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to testify? Yeah, for you not been listening? Yeah. <laughs> Bitch. Do we juror throw the line book at her? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> juror number four. As I'm sure you will appreciate having observed with your own eyes today. Witness testimony can lead to the most extraordinary truths being unearthed. Truths of, uh, truths of which the witnesses themselves may not even be aware. Oh, dearie me. So, I demand your full, unadulterated testimony, Mrs. Garadib. And mark my words, in this court of law today, we shall extract the truth. Do you concur, councils? Throw her to the wolves! <laughs> Certainly, my lord. Oh! Uh, um... Th that's what I'm hoping for, my lord. Yes, please. Maybe. Yee! Hopefully. This is such a strange feeling. For the first time since arriving in this country, it actually feels real. You feel like a real lawyer? <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm here, in the Old Bailey, and I'm a lawyer! You're a lawyer? Oh my god. I'm so proud of you. We're gonna get a to be continued. I swear- Oh, we're not- Oh. oh. I'm okay. honestly shocked. I was like, was oh, I know. The music is swelling, we're gonna get a to be continued? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> right. Witness, state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yes. My name is Joan Garadeb. And I'm, um, well... Slapping myself. I'm a juror <laughs> and such like. Such like. And... Housewife or what? That's really sad. There's a special crisis. What a mood. Uh, the court has decided decided your testimony is required in order to clarify matters in this case. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Leia. Uh, do you understand, madam? Yes, my lord. You will tell the court everything that took place in your household on the evening in question. While I watch you squirm. And I warn you, do not attempt to hide the truth. Oh, oh, dearie me. Well, she is squirming. <laughs> mm. Oh, this must be her husband. Was I also him? Stand <laughs> up, Joni! Not the door! <laughs> <is open. laughs> oh. oh, yeah, there he is. Okay, the weird ass moon face guy. Okay. I think you guys uh, technically swapped roles when you took yeah. on the juror. If yeah. I remember correctly, Mono is Joan. Yeah, yeah, and I was Mr. Garadub. So uh, you get to be Mr. Garadub now, Mono. Um, cool. but, oh, I didn't know you were here, John. I love this switcheroo we have going on. <laughs> um, wasn't only you in the room that day, old thing, was it? Rather think I ought to testify as well, don't you? If you guys start, like, Making moaning out. over each other, like, I quit this game. 
<laughs> but but what about your knee, dear? Oh, don't you worry about that. Hardly notice it. I'm not in the... S oh, well. I'm not the sort of chap to leave a comrade to face disciplinary action alone. This woman li literally is so abusive to you. Yeah. And you're like, ride or die. Yep. <laughs> you're like, buddy, best girl. Buddy. I'm so sorry that you're in this <laughs> deep. Uh, oh, John. It's like the other couple, but not. <laughs> yeah. Patricia, do you think you're a better couple than me and Rolly? Yeah, I really. challenge you to a couple's duel. <laughs> yes, I want to see it. <laughs> I want to see uh, it. I presume you are Mr. John Garadub? <clears throat> yes, sir. Former second lieutenant of the 3rd Regiment of the 4th Northumberland Facilia, sir. That was a lot. Received my fair share of action and now living in the quiet life, as it were. The quiet life. Where you're not engaged in an incendiary battle with your spouse on the day in question. Oh, uh, well, yes. Ahem. <clears throat> quite. It was the worst fight of my life. Worse than the war itself. I believe this may represent a first in the proud history of the British court. Uh, calling a juror to the witness stand is unprecedented. Everything is unprecedented until it happens. Um, however, the court will hear you uh, hear your testimony now, juror number four, and that of your husband. husband. <laughs> You will recount clearly and concisely the events in your home at the time of the incident in question. Sir, at once. All right, the Battle of Garadab. Garadab squared. <laughs> yes, on the day you were referring to, the wife and I did have a bit of a skirmish. Can't recall the reason now. Because my life flashed before my eyes. <laughs> Knocked a candlestick over and set the fire to the carpet. Soon had it out, though, and got the window open. Meanwhile, I was picking up whatever I could find to throw at him. Yeah, plenty of knives around our place. Can't say I noticed one or not. If two went missing, I'm afraid. I was too busy dodging. If that bully thing in the victim's back really was one of ours, you'll have a job proving it, I think. That's why we're here! <laughs> hmm. It sounds as though it was quite the battlefield in your household that evening. Although an entirely one-sided assault, it seems. The enemy caught up us on... Oh, wow. Caught us on the hop, sir. Had no choice but to dig in and take defensive measures. To be honest, if the enemy had kept shelling us for another minute, we'd have been toast. Of course, a veteran such as myself... Well, it's only, uh, I is only too aware that on every battlefield, you're just a knot's whisker from death at any moment. I, I don't think you should be concerned about death when you're fighting with your wife, but... Our, <laughs> I mean, it? or should he be more concerned? Well, that's true. Uh, <laughs> there <laughs> is a lot wife. of, uh, spousal murder, uh, <laughs> statistically. <laughs> Um, are we still talking about a marital quarrel here? Well. I must say, I'm dubious that this testimony will shed any light on the origins of this jackknife. In combat, one's focus narrows such that surroundings are barely noticed. These witnesses may not 
be able to offer anything more than they have already testified. This is maybe a dead end. Von Zeke's may well be right. Well, whatever the chances. Uh, we only have this last cross-examination to uncover the truth, Mr. Narahoto. Yeah. Okay. I'm afraid so. It's because you cheated on me with that harlot! <laughs> <laughs> True. Very well, counsel. Begin your cross-examination. Alright. Let's start cross-examining. Let's clickety-clack away on any of these things. <laughs> Like, I truly yeah. think, like, this is... This was an accident. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, at the most, like... They can be held responsible... Like, she can be held responsible for an accidental murder. Or, she's not even dead! <laughs> no. Uh, an accidental <laughs> stabbing. Not. We keep talking like she's dead, and she's not. <laughs> like, I'm alive, you guys! I mean, I can see why she's in denial, though. Like, if yeah. someone told you that, hey, you mur you almost murdered someone, you know, like... And you had no idea it wasn't even what you were trying to do. Like, yeah, I can imagine you'd be in some denial. I had, That's I cool. just, I feel like if she knew, I would like to believe, like, if she knew, she would be mm -hmm. acting different. Mm -hmm. Because, like, uh, a little dark. Uh, so, my mm. grandpa was driving one day on the freeway in Southern California and uh, had the unfortunate timing to be the car that a uh, a jumper jumped onto oh uh and that like tore him up so like that's one of those things where it's like that this would have torn her up if mm -hmm. like she didn't do it on purpose just like my grandpa didn't do like hit the yeah. person with his car on purpose all of a sudden they were there and so you know but also she did actively throw a knife um yeah <laughs> So her target was the wrong one. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, what, was it reckless endangerment? Is that what we decided? Yeah, reckless yeah. endangerment. Because no one's mm. dead, so it can't be involuntary manslaughter. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Anyway, now yeah, she dies. So day... <laughs> if she, if she dies, what? Mm -hmm. If she dies, that's involuntary manslaughter. But oh, yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yes, on the day you're referring to, the wife and I did have a bit of a skirmish. Can't recall the reason now. The reason is what you told us yesterday, I believe? Yes, that's right. The harlot. <laughs> yeah, I remember the correctly. Harlot. As it all started because of a note that was tucked into the pages of a book belonging to Mr. Garadeb. A rather passionate note, in fact. Ooh. But Mrs. Garadeb found the note, discovering her husband's little secret. Um, and she gave him a mighty number of slaps across the face for it. We're so excitedly talking rare. about <laughs> This abuse. Uh, what a sword state of affairs. Hell on earth. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was so dramatic. Oh. Uh, um, I say, when Chap says he can't control things, it's common decent to don't try to drag it all up. Besides, half of it was a wide of the mark anyway. Is <laughs> she still? She... Wow. Is she gonna spill stuff on him again? <laughs> a likely story. She knows exactly okay. why she was pissed at him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> These waters run very deep. She is not hiding that she, she remembers is. specifically what he did. Absolutely not. <laughs> oh god, yeah. this is a good line. Hell hath uh -oh. no fury like a woman scorned. I yeah. would know I come from hell. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what transpired next after these multiple blows to the face? Hmm. Well, 
knocked a candlestick over and set fire to the carpet. Soon had it out, though, and got the window open. And the fire also spread to some items of furniture, didn't it? Mm, the bookcase, my armchair, anything of mine, really. Just so happens that there was some bath water around in the evening, so I sloshed that about to put it all out. A most, an precarious... Anime girl the <laughs> anyway. A most precarious situation you put yourself in. Um, ours is a three-story to townhouse on the west side of the street, where the water main isn't connected yet. I have to draw water from a public water pump during the day if you need any, you see. Uh, the lodgers are always moaning that they can't get any water at night. Although the little mustache Japanese man buys water in bottles, I believe. The defendant, Mr. Natsume, you mean? Problem solver. Yes. <laughs> He receives a stipend for his studies, you know, from his home country. Uh, can you imagine being able to brew a pot of tea at all hours? He obviously, he's obviously very, very well off. Have you actually seen the state of the man? Uh, I... That was a weird... <laughs> Where did that sound come from? I have no idea. Oh god, it's fun feedback. Awesome. I believe he uses all of his income to buy books. <laughs> I tried to fight the fire with my cannon, but it only made it worse. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, the point is I was able to douse the fire with water. Fortunately enough. Meanwhile, I was picking up whatever I could find to throw at him. Lady, have you ever considered anger management classes? Clearly not. <laughs> Even though the room was on fire? Uh, as far as I was concerned at the time, it was more important to extinguish my anger than the flames. <sighs> when a woman wants to throw, she must throw. That is most certainly not true of Susato, of a Susato takedown, Mr. Narohodo. How did she know I was thinking that? <laughs> so, please cast your mind back and try to remember. Was a knife among the items that you threw at your husband that day? In all honesty, I don't recall. Uh, but I feel I must point out that I am no monster. Let me see. Some bread, a cabbage, garlic, a towel, and a sponge, a uh, napkin. Ooh. Excuse me. Excuse me. Do you have something to say, sir? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Mr. Garadab. Me pipe is good. Hey, you hey, don't shoot her. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Did your wife's remark just now bring something to mind? <clears throat> no thing of any significance, no. Just that barrage of projectiles to thing launched in my direction was somewhat more solid than she implies. Books, bricks, and the fire poker. I seem to recall. Ouch. Holy shit. And the woman's name is Uncanny. <laughs> and she. Oh, good grief. We're not at home now. This is a court of law. She improvises. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Ever so sorry, dear. What's she even doing with a teapot in here? Honestly, John, I would never have thrown such things at you, obviously. Mm, 
Well, if you take a look at this, then. How do you suppose that happened, hmm? Your pipe, sir? If you ever have an affair, you're gonna experience much worse than a Sosato stick. <laughs> yeah! There! I had this thing in my hand, as usual, at the time of the onslaught. Knocked it clean out with one of her soft projectiles she did, yes. And then I went to pick the thing up. It was broken in two. I'd like to see a sponge do that sort of damage. Maybe not a sponge, but a cabbage could probably do that. Yeah. I see. Cabbage. Your pipe was broken. Yeah. It would have never been sent flying unless it was hit by something pretty solid. Anyway, I've managed to bandage the thing up for now. <laughs> you are one to exaggerate, aren't you, dear? Um, who's exaggerating? <laughs> hmm. I wonder what we should make of this account. Could it be important, or is it just insignificant? It's important. It's always important. The defense believes Mr. Garadev's remarks just now to be of great significance. Objection! Hmm. This war veteran's words only tell us one thing. Betray a fiery wife, and pipes as well as hearts may be broken. Sentimental wisdom, perhaps, but hardly worth of adding to the formal testimony. Indeed. Um, common sense, one might say. Right one? Uh, in that case, would you at least permit us to examine the pipe, sir? Yeah, well, I, yeah, I don't see why not. Oh, dearie me. Uh, then you, there you go again, trying to in <laughs> ingratiate. ingratiate, thank you, yourself with a young lady. <sighs> Ladies. Uh, very well. The court will accept the gentleman's pipe as evidence. All right. We have a pipe. Whee! What if the pipe was cut with the knife? Oh. All right. Let's take a look at the pipe really quick. Older single ladies. Older single ladies. Put your hands up. It looks to be in a sorry state with that bandage around it, doesn't it? But for some reason, it feels slightly ominous to me. Like, it's trying to shout a warning. Mm -hmm. Probably because it's the same blue as Mr. Garadip's dressing gown. I suppose it must have a uh, considerable sentimental value to Mr. Garadip. Given that he's gone to the trouble of repairing it like this. Either that, or he can't afford to replace it. There's a small nick out of the bowl here, look. It appears to have been made relatively recently. I don't know how I can tell that, but... And see how there's little scrapes and dents all over it? It's a clearly well-loved pipe. Yeah, you're right. Seems to me recently that being well-loved goes hand-in-hand hand with, uh, getting some battle scars. This particular nick is catching my... Because it's clearly new. That's all we got. Oh, oh never mind. Hello. Oh. Nani? Look at oh. That. oh, shit. Something just twinkled inside the chamber. Of oh, that's right. The knife was <gasps> broken off. Oh. Okay, there it is. We found the there tip. Is. Oh. There is. Something just twinkled inside the chamber of the pipe there. Yes, I saw it. Something stuck in there, I think. Let's turn it over and give it a shake. What's this? Uh, it's a tiny fragment of metal. He's trying to give himself lead poisoning. I, I don't know what our problem <laughs> is. Uh, it looks like the tip of a blade or something. 
the tip of a bead. Blade. Really, it couldn't be. All right. So glad we caught that. Let's take a quick look at our uh, fragment. This is the tiny piece of metal we found in the chamber of Mr. Garadep's pipe. It it looks like the tip of a blade or something. The tip of a blade. Uh, something wrong, Mr. Narohoto? I... I don't really know. There's just something tickling me, but I can't quite put my finger on what it is. <laughs> Perhaps in that case... It would be wise to examine some of the p other pieces of evidence again. Alright, so if I take a look at the knife... Come on. Open up, bitch. Oh, look here, Mr. Narohoto. Just at the tip. <laughs> A small piece of blade appears to be missing. Wait. Don't know Part why you're snickering. Missing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could be wrong, but I've just got a feeling. Remember this? Ah, that's... That's a tiny fragment of metal that we found inside Mr. Garadip's pipe. Like, we weren't just talking about it. Yeah, and just maybe... Um, oh my, it's a perfect fit. Somehow I just knew it. Alright. I love how the defense has just been, like, curled over the bench, like, whispering amongst ourselves. <laughs> I hope I didn't speak out of turn, Mr. Narahodo. I I was just feeling rather disappointed in you at your request that your request was for you <laughs> that your request was turned down. <laughs> oh no, it, it's fine. Thanks to Susato-san, we have some new evidence to work with. We should examine yeah, it carefully, yeah. like we didn't just do that. <laughs> well, thank you for that rebuttal, Mr. Garadib. Now, if we could return to the crux of the matter. What can you tell the court about the knife used to attack the victim? Plenty of knives around our place. Can't, can't say I notice if one or two went missing, I'm afraid. If that bully thing in the victim's back really was one of ours, you'd have a job proving it, I think. Okay, apparently that wasn't correct. Like, I don't know what? how me pointing out whatever. Uh, the odds with this evidence because it really is, but that's okay. Idiots. Oh, I'm Star Council, but I failed to see the connection. Oh. Uh, and for heaven's sakes, would you kindly desist from that wide-eyed, panic-stricken look you are you you are want to wear? But that's the only panic-stricken look I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only one I have, so. It's All just right. the way my face looks. So I guess we'll just... This is just my face. Yeah, this is it's just my face. Oh. Sorry, would Apparently... you... Mm -hmm. Apparently your mic is uh, dipping in and out, Kels. Fine? Yeah. Oh, wait a I will play with it for a second. Okay, we'll see if that works. Um... Sorry, would you care to elaborate? No, nothing to say, really. Rather partial to a sport of carving, you see. Pipes and whatnot. Fishing and tackle, you know, that sort of thing. It's a passion we both share. I like to carve little wooden trinkets, too. And then uh, there's my leather work. 
Sorry to say, we're always losing knives about the place, and we have dozens of the things. They sell them at the market sometimes. Twenty for the price of nineteen. Ooh, Needless to say, I snapped them up. Such a deal. Yeah. What a steal! John prefers to use two knives at mealtimes, too, instead of a knife and a fork. Okay. What? Sure? He's just stabbing his food. <laughs> Imagine using <laughs> knives slash chopsticks. Ah, Alright. Here we go again with the Scaldanes. Why are they being so evasive? Because I don't want to get caught. <laughs> By involuntary Meslar. Um, I imagine it's because they don't want to believe it. They can't bear the thought that it might have been one of their knives that injured the victim. Which is entirely understandable, of course. But still. Go on with your testimony, witnesses. And open. Mm, sir. If that body thing in the victim's back really was one of ours, you'd have a job proving it, I think. So you have no in no intention of admitting it was your knife, unless we can produce proof? Hmm. <laughs> Even though there is no other credible possibility if Mr. Natsume is innocent? Objection. This is my soup knife. You forget, my Nipponese friend, that it has yet to be established that the accused is not responsible for the attack. As if I could forget. Only there was some way to know who had handled the knife. But I suppose wizardry like that is just a dream. Perhaps you're thinking of fingerprinting, Mr. Narahodo. What? You, you mean, it's not a dream? That sort of wizardry <laughs> actually exists? What is this witchcraft? <laughs> uh, whenever people touch anything, they leave behind a unique pattern from their skin, or so they say. But I, I can't so see anything. Goats. There are already countries in the world where these so-called fingerprints can be used as evidence. But not the greatest legal system in the world, Great Britain? Holla. <laughs> Lord Strongheart is currently discussing the matter at the Ministry of Justice. Yes, I believe we are rapidly approaching an era of scientific methods of investigation. Yay! But for now, we shall have to find an alternative method to proving our, our assertion. Assertion? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um... That this knife found in the victim's body was originally Mr. and Mrs. Garadub's in Mr. G Mrs. Garadub's house. Ugh. Only I could transplant this whole incident to several years in the future. <laughs> but at the extent of their testimony, is it? What do you think, Mr. Narahodo? I think I submitted the right thing before and you guys are stupid. Well, mm -hmm. I think we've heard all this before, to be honest. I can't say I'm particularly confident that we'll be able to prove anything new from this testimony. But in this cross-examination, I missed the second half of that sentence, uh, that we established how this knife came to be at the scene of the incident. Yeah, I know. For example, I examined Kazuma's fingerprints all over your body. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure both of them must be feeling very worried. Worried that uh, it was in fact a knife belonging to one of them that caused the victim's injury. If we could find even a tiny shred of evidence to support that theory, it would clinch this trial for us. It would explain everything. Yes, it would. So for soseki sans sake, we must. We must find that last crucial piece of evidence. Alright. Yeah, that's Let's get a clack on everything. 
Alright, do I have to show the pipe? Fragment of metal? Alright, we'll just... Okay. Apparently I had to show the tip of the knife, not the actual knife. <laughs> Mr. Garadab, could I ask you to take a good look at this, please? Mm. Hmm. You can ask, but I can't see a bolly thing. Damn. I used to call me Dead Eye Dev back in the regiment, of course, but uh, that was some time ago now. Even when I'm trying to enjoy a large print book by the fire these days, uh, I struggle to tell a B from a D and a P from a Q, to be honest. Oh, he does. Dear me, it's rather we wearing being asked about every other letter and every other word. You must be very dizzy. <laughs> wow, that was a pun. <laughs> what is that? A tiny scrap of metal? Yes, almost certainly from the tip of a blade. And Deep what may blade. appear at first to be just a tiny scrap is in fact a crucial piece of evidence. Hmm. Interesting. And where did the defense come by this evidence? I had it under my bench the whole time. Where the fuck do you think I got it? It was lodged in the chamber of Mr. Garadeb's pipe. My pipe, you say? By Jove, I wonder how that got in there. And what precisely does this fragment of metal signify, Council? Are you suggesting that this in some way is in some way related to the matter of the stabbing on Briar Road? This piece of evidence resembles a metal steak too much. Get it away from my heart. I am. What? When put together with another piece of evidence already in the court record, I believe this tiny fragment of metal will unravel the whole truth of the case, my lord. A lady. Oh my god, she has the box. It's <laughs> cute. Hmm. You appear rather confident in that extraordinary statement, counsel. Very well then, present the pertinent evidence to the court. What evidence, when paired with the fragment of metal, already reveals, allegedly reveals, the truth of this entire case? This is the knife that was found in the victim's back. If you look closely, you will see that there is a small piece at the tip of the blade that's missing. A common issue with the inferior blade sold at unsavory street markets. Are you really going to choose now? To sit there and call them peasants? Yes, this is a peasant's knife. Criminals who use them regularly leave tips lodged in their victim's bones. What? And what of this particular knife? Hella peasant. No doubt, its tip has suffered a similar fate, now languishing somewhere near the spine of the victim. Have you not been listening this whole time I've been talking? No. Yeah, no. No, that's not the case! Hmm? The tip of this particular knife's blade is the very fragment of metal we discovered in the chamber of Mr. Garadeb's pipe. Ugh. Ugh, dramatic. Ugh. Good grief, Lord Van Zeeks. Oh, my neck is stuck <laughs> in this position thanks to your stupidity. Oh, I don't believe it. <laughs> Why am I in <laughs> this pose? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, looks like he want to be Phantom of the Opera. Anyway, <laughs> no. God damn it. I can't. I need a straight face. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I look at it. Oh. Um, I'm good. 
knife from the crime scene in this fragment of metal are a, a perfect of match. Opera. Reaper of the Opera is here. <laughs> the uh, Wait, the Reaper uh, of the Bailey is here. Inside your mind. <laughs> Odar, Odar, Odar. Is this some sort of Eastern sorcery? Oh my god. Yes, clearly. Please don't. Now is the time to scream racism. Oh, for sure. This is no magic, my lord. I should know I'm a vampire, and that's not how magic works. This <laughs> is a miracle. A miracle? The Von Zeeks has figured it out, has he? Miracle? <laughs> a miracle. Sorry. Um, uh, Council, <laughs> explain the extraordinary coincidence at once. Yes, my lord. The Ain't crucial... no coinky dink. <laughs> yeah. The crucial point we have to ask ourselves here is when did the fragment of metal find its way inside Mr. Garadev's pipe? Something that was clarified for us in the most recent witness testimony. I had this thing in my hands as usual at the time of the onslaught. Knocked it clean out of my... Uh, clean out with one of her soft projectiles she did, yes... It would have never been sent flying unless it was hit by something pretty solid. Mm -hmm. Oh, dearie, uh, me. During the argument between these two that occurred just as the victim was on the pavement below, Mrs. Garadab flung this knife at her husband. However, the knife missed Mr. Garadab, instead striking the pipe in his hand at the time. Which caused the tip to break off, of course. Good lord. Yes. And that is when the tiny tip of the blade found its way inside Mr. Garadev's pipe. <laughs> oh, the chances of that are really a one. And yet, there's no other credible explanation for how the tip of the blade ended up in your pipe. Then, after losing its tip, the knife ricocheted off the pipe and flew out of the open window. Oh. In short, this knife, which fell from the window of the Garadup's house, is the very same knife that struck the victim in the middle of the back on the street below. Oh gosh, oh dear, oh. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> that was like Rude almost note. perfectly in sync. Like, it's pretty solid. It's, it's the couple's counseling. There we oh, go. I just had to get my. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, sipping my wine real loud. A full bodied theory. I'll give you that. Huh? Hmm. A complex bouquet of seemingly trivial points, plausibly arranged to create an almost passable vintage. Allow me to toast my learned friend's characteristically Nipponese approach to boiling his argument. Um, sorry? But after all, it's just a theory. A game theory. The portal I fear is corked. Because, you see... Mmm... It's spoiled by an unsurmountable inconsistency. An insurmountable... What?! Fuck to the foot. Lord Van Zeeks, explain yourself. Uh, what is this uh, inconsistent? Sorry, uh, inconsistency you claim to have identified, Maverick. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> An inconsistency of the simplest nature, my lord. I can hold this pose all day if you want me to. 
The victim was found with the knife planted in the middle of her back. Yes, in her... Oh, no! <laughs> That's why he just gets left. Silly little man. Ow. No, Joe, no thing. What are you getting so excited about? Let us consider the basic facts of the case once more. The victim was walking along the pavement before being stabbed in the back and falling to the ground. If the knife had struck her, had fallen from above. Mm. Oh my God. <laughs> More fuel to the fire. There's no possible way it could have planted itself on the victim's back. Uh, it sure could have if she was bent over to pick up the book in her hand uh -huh. yes exactly Hodor, Hodor quite right you see that's exactly right that if the knife had fallen on her from above it would have struck her on the top of her head stop slapping it <laughs> well um. No, bro, 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 bro. He's not for words. No, I didn't even like the theory in the first place. I don't know. I don't know. What happened? Something. 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 Jury. It would appear the defense has made rather spectacular blunder. No, the defense is just the dumbass who hasn't quite figured it out yet. Yes. If a theory has even one inconsistency, it cannot stand. Excuse me, excuse me. We have pointed out how many inconsistencies in this trial, but somehow Soseki is still gonna die if we don't prove this with one minor mm -hmm. inconsistency. Like, come on, my dude. Bitch. Your th Theory, my learned friend, is history. So oh, close. I could see the truth. I was so sure we were on the right track. But now the way's been blocked completely by just one simple inconsistency. Keep it down to look at the book. Or in other words. <laughs> Uh, we simply need to eliminate that one inconsistency and the theory will stand. Miss Susato! Uh, you mustn't worry... <laughs> you mustn't worry, Mr. Narhono. Uh, we were just caught off guard, that's all, and your mind went blank. But if the path you were on is indeed correct, then a way will present itself. I know that Suzato's only a 16-year-old, but quite honestly, her whole role in this is to occasionally give me a head bat and a juice box and tell me I'm doing a good job. Yeah. You're doing Yay. great, sweetie. Mm -hmm. uh, the key to this uh, in the court record is in the court record, I'm sure. All the information you need is there. Huh? <laughs> it seems you have nothing to say. My Nipponese friend. Well, your silence speaks volumes. Oh. No, I just panicked. A tactic acceptance that your theory is fatally flawed. No, I'm a dumb bitch. Dumb bitch hours. Dumb bitch shoes. Dumb bitch shoes. Exactly. This inconsistency doesn't mean I was on the wrong track. It means that I need to sharpen my mind and dig deeper for the truth. It's a test. Yes! If the knife fell on the victim from above, there's no way that it could have hit her in the middle of her back. Under normal circumstances, that is. What are you implying? Gravity changed, and she just happened to somehow be standing at a 90-degree angle. Thank you for coming to my she TED Talk. She jumped. <laughs> she decided to lie on the ground. 
Mm -hmm. Council. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can explain this inconsistency. That can explain how the knife that fell from above could have pierced the victim's back. We already have the answer. She's blanking. <laughs> <laughs> blanking. Sure. Goodness. Uh, just madness. Surely this must be the last time. God, I hope so. <laughs> Council, present the evidence of which you speak. This is the last inconsistency. The final piece in the puzzle. If I can successfully make sense of this, the truth will be laid bare at last. The evidence that explains how the falling knife became lodged in the victim's back is... The walk! Yeah! This, the fourth book found at the scene. This is the final piece of evidence the defense will present. The burnt book. Is that not Mr. Garadab's book? Yes. And to understand its significance, we have to consider how it came to be at the scene in the first place. This photographic print clearly shows the book in question, and the victim holding it in her hand. But as well we all know, it was the police constable that put the book between her fingers like that. Quite so. As part of his wholesome, wholesale transplanting wholesome. of the crime, <laughs> the wholesome transplanting of the crime scene to the opposite side of the road. That's, That's true. Very wholesome of him. However, as part of his testimony, Constable Beat made an extremely enlightening statement on that point. But what made you place that book in the victim's hand? Oh, well, sir. That's because that's how I found it. Uh, when we first ran over to the scene, the victim was already holding the book. So when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. In other words, the victim had already picked the book up of her own volition. And clearly, that must have been before she suffered the knife wound. Well, I should say so. Sorry. After being attacked with a knife, I don't imagine she'd have been doing much of anything. So the question becomes, why did the victim have that book in her hand? Yo, oh, bye. Bye, Jinko. The Jinko. <laughs> I think I'm beginning to see what may have happened now. Oh, dearie me. Hmm. We know that the book fell from the top floor of the Geridab household onto the pavement below. At precisely the moment that the victim was walking past. Yes, at exactly that moment. The young woman was walking along the street in the light fog. When all of a sudden, a book fell right in front of her. The book I threw? Yes, Mrs. Garadep. And what do you think the woman did? What would you do if you were walking along and suddenly a book landed in front of you on the pavement? Death note? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I really can't imagine, but I, I suppose. Especially if it was on fire. Yeah. Uh, she might have reached down. And picked the book up. Yes, that is exactly what the woman in fact did. She picked up the book. Oh, heavens. And when the woman reached down to pick up the fallen book up, 
what position would her back have been in? That's right, facing the sky completely and utterly defenseless. Then, in the very next moment, while the woman was still bent over picking up the book, the next object fell from the room above, the jackknife, straight into the middle of her back. And at that same time, walking by chance directly behind Miss Green, was the defendant, Mr. Soseki Natsume. Well, I never... It appeared to Mr. Natsume that the woman simply collapsed on the floor. In the dark and the fog, he didn't see the knife falling on her from above. Ah! She was about to become Hira. I saved us all by throwing that knife! There we go. <laughs> and from the other direction... The constable and his wife saw no one but the victim and her apparent attacker. So there never was a real culprit to run from the scene in the first place. Yeah, he just thought it was raining knives. <laughs> no, this was nothing more than a series of unlikely events that culminated in an unfortunate accident. A series of unfortunate events? And that is the real truth behind this case. Ayo! Time to do the single. Uh, oh, the single. <laughs> well, Mr. and Mrs. Garadab? Put your hands up! That's <laughs> 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 terrible timing of that. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. Er... That's not the words I'm supposed to be reading. It's the very <laughs> first time he showed me that knife. I had my suspicions. Let's <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> just make it up words. <laughs> uh, I wonder if perhaps it may have been something like that. <sighs> there, there, old bean. <laughs> Poor <laughs> <Sister>. <laughs> Oh, what did I just hit my head on? Oh, a spider rope. Okay, here you go, Maverick. Um, of course, I'll ne I never meant for anything of the sort to happen. I just wanted to hurt my husband, yeah, after all. Not exactly. other people. Like, I'd like to point fault, out, wasn't it? he literally opened up a switchblade and then threw it at him. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Girl, it, needs some therapy. Like, she does yeah. probably deserve to be charged with attempted murder, not of the person that actually got hit, but uh, mm. yeah. the one she's married to. I take full responsibility. Uh, I let my anger get the better of me. I, I threw that book. And I threw the knife as well. That'd be like rapid fire succession for her to still be bending down getting the book. I mean, I guess if like if a book dropped in front of you, you'd probably wait for a second to make sure nothing else was going to fall before going towards it, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, John, dear. It's all right. I know. I'm- I'm ever so sorry that I didn't kill you! Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry! Wait, she falls off her box. Okay. Oh, no, she doesn't. Oh! <laughs> My back! Oh! Okay. <laughs> sure, let's go with that. The defense has paused the single lady's dance, only to sit there and go, what the fuck just happened? Um... Maverick, 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 now is not the time <laughs> to attack me. Please, can we revisit this later? Thank you. Uh, Lord Van Zeeks, what, new, what news of Mrs. Garadub? 
<sighs> she had taken to the infirmary. It would appear that today's events had left her in an especially flustered state. However, I believe she will recover in due course. There is no cause for concern. Yes, unbeknownst to themselves, they caused what could have easily been a terrible tragedy. And may still be. Isn't she in a coma? Mm-hmm. Uh, they shall have to prepare themselves for the consequences of their actions. But, oh. Garadab didn't do anything. It was just... Right. Just her. Uh, it was just... Well, I mean, obviously, like, he set her off, but also, like, you he's not responsible for how violent she got. Um, yeah. yeah. There is some good news. Not oh, me. that's... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want. There no. is some good news, however, my lord. Guys swapping roles again? Um... <laughs> no! <laughs> I have just... Uh, I have just had a word from the hospital where the victim is being treated. Her condition is improving steadily. And the doctor believes she will regain consciousness soon. It's strange. We've been talking about the victim all this time, but we've never once met her. How wonderful. The woman is out of danger, it seems. Yes, that is good news. <laughs> All John did that might have been against the law is tax fraud because of the window stuff. Yeah. Nope. So they're going uh, to jail for tax fraud. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Soseki Natsume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still looks like he's on drugs. Oh, yes. On behalf of my fellow countrymen, I would like to take this opportunity to beg your pardon, sir. Uh, you came from your distant, your distant eastern homeland to study our great British culture. Okay. And have been repaid with immeasurable unkindness. Please, ex that's putting it lightly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Please accept our heartfelt apologies. Yeah. Are y'all gonna apologize to Ryunosuke and Susato as well? Nah. Okay. Oh, no. It, it's me who should be begging your pardon. Bitch, don't apologize to them. They put you in jail. Yeah. For being there. Oh, no, Mr. Natsume. That evening, when the young woman just collapsed on the pavement before my eyes... I I jumped to the wrong conclusion again in my confusion. What conclusion, sir? I was sure that the woman was dead. Yes, Constable Beat said the same thing. Didn't he? He thought she had been killed, too. I suppose she must have looked completely lifeless. It's been about a year since I arrived in Great Britain now, but I still can't get used to the life here. I I can't relax. I'm sure there are evil spirits lurking in the fog, like they're haunting me. Poor Sosek Song. His imagination really has got the better of him. Yes, poor man. So when it happened, I thought the young woman had been taken by the fog spirits. I should have never have dropped my books like that and run away. I should have called for help for the doctor, for the police. Instead, I managed to create a rift in the relationship of trust between our two empires. Oh no, the like vaguely racist statements they keep making probably has already done that. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> and for that, I'm truly sorry. You have nothing to apologize for, sweetie. Yeah. You're doing You're great, doing great sweetie. Yeah. Uh, one could indeed say that some sort of mischievous spirit has been at work here, I think. What? <laughs> no. Uh, one that created a chain of unfortunate mishaps. We were befooled by this spirit and led to false conclusions. Nobody's being haunted. Spirit of racism. Um, <laughs> thanks to Lord Van Zeeks and your, your young lawyer here from the East. I'm what sorry. Lord Van Zeeks exactly. Do? What sorry, the? What? Audio. <laughs> what the fuck did the prosecution do other than get in my way the whole time? Yeah, they did shit. Von Zeeks, meet me out in the parking lot. We will fight this out. Yeah, kick his vampire ass. Exactly. <laughs> get you your steak knife right now. I have the power of God and anime on my side. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> that chain has now been broken and the spirit exercised. But now that anime is Astro Boy. <laughs> I certainly commend you both. What did he do, even? Yeah. Uh, oh. Hmm. Now then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Yes, my lord. And concluding this trial, I must ask one last time for your decision regarding the defendant's culpability. <laughs> are you ready to present your findings to the court? Ow, Maverick, are you ready to present your findings, sir? <laughs> As the yeah, woman of this choice. jury, I can assure you we've reached a fair and just conclusion. Are you sure? I do declare that the truth can be extremely cruel at times. Well, I didn't suspect the woman next to me, that's for sure. That is not her, but... <laughs> Sit again for the old bean while she's out of action, you know, but I, I know what her decision would be. Why would she get a vote? <laughs> right. Now finally be able to get out of here and start work. Well, it's about damn time. I say, I, I'll have a corker of a story to tell the grandchildren when I get home, won't I? Yep. Sure will. Sure will. Sure. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I hereby demand your final decisions. Mr. Foreman. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Their chairs are changing. Right. Did they do that last time? Yeah, they do it every time. Yeah. Every oh. So black when they're voting them guilty, white when they vote them not guilty. Yeah. Wow. And now it's a wow. super fire. Very well, Mr. Sasaki Natsume, I hereby pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, who am I married to? Yeah, the company. Freedom. Yeah. Freedom. Uh, I'm married to freedom. And there's yeah. fireworks inside. <laughs> Why are there fireworks inside? Because uh, is it a British courtroom if it's not a fire hazard? You're right. You may kiss the bride. And finally, Mr. Natsume. Justice herself. <laughs> oh, yes. Lord, sir. Make sure you don't get set on fire after this. You are now free, a free man once more. It is my hope that you will continue to further your education in British, British culture. Uh, and you may... And may you never again be brought before me. With the number <laughs> of racist okay. okay. yeah. again. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, sir, of course. On my life, I swear it, I'll never set foot in a courtroom again. I transported to tears. <laughs> Thank you, councils. Court is adjourned.
Yay, we did Yay, it. Yay, we did it. Now it was for, all an accident. Yay. Yeah, for someone to bring a carriage into the courtroom so that Von Zeeks can put the uh, defendant in it and then set it on fire. Yay. All right, 20th of February, 3.17 p.m., the Old Bailey Defendant's Antechamber. Oh, hello, cool. Not my name, but okay. Wait, you, you mean me? Of course! Is there any other locum here? Is there even one? Compared to the original locum student, uh, Mr. Narahodo Esquire, uh, your name has become <laughs> rather short, hasn't it? Hello, What's wrong friend. with using my actual name? Oh, at last, I'm free, I'm free! Joyful, joyous, jubilant, jubilation! Heady, hearty, happiness, hurrah! Oh, I am pleased, Mr. Natsume is delighted. Wouldn't it be so hard to just say that, then? Look, you did it! You saved me from the brink! Well, what happened to the poor woman was in no way your fault, after all. I'm just glad everyone can see that now. No, 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 not that. Yeah, lovely, loyal, locum, lawyer. Um, yes? No. I mean, as I said before, I have just never got used to life here in Great Britain. Every time I look over my shoulder, I see foreigners. I see towering brick buildings. I'm haunted <laughs> by foreigners in this foreign <laughs> country. Um. And from high up windows, I see them looking down on me, laughing. Look at that little hunchback. Uh, oh dear, I'm sure it's all in your head, Mr. Natsume. It's all We're in your head, Maverick. Head. It's all in your doodle. Uh, but... but... Oh, but. Not me. Double not butts my butt. today, you locum lawyer gave me gloom the boot. You stood firm behind that baronical bench before all those babbling British. I hope the people behind me are not listening to that. You battled to the bitter end, laying bare the baffling truth. And when I beheld the blinding fireworks among the beams of the Bailey's roof, I bellowed. That's a lot of alliteration. That's a Behold lot of alliteration. Yeah. Are ever born. Well, that's very flattering. Yeah. And we're very pleased for you. This has given me a wonderful anecdote to the account to my old friends back in Japan. I don't necessarily think this is going to be a super thrilling story. Hi, did you? Did I tell you about that time that a woman got killed in front of me by having a knife dropped on her and I fled and then got arrested? Did I tell you about the time that the white people framed me for murder? <laughs> <laughs> an, an anecdote? That what's to become of all my hard work? Yes. Congratulations. Oh. oh, there you are, my dear fellow. I'm putting money on it being Sholmes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> you would be right. I would be right. I apologize for keeping you waiting. I rose late this morning. You guys can just pay me, PayPal me over some cash. It's fine. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, before we move too far away from this, the, uh, the, that meme pops up in my head, the, uh, a white man? No! <laughs> uh, <laughs> if I ever find that sound, I'll send it to you guys. Perfect. So you put it on Twitter. Yes. Um, a white man? No! no! <laughs> Just... <laughs> <laughs> my favorite one is, uh... They do it. They had. They mash it up with. Um, I write sins, not tragedies. So it's like, <laughs> oh, can you imagine? Um, can't well hear, but yeah, <laughs> the poor groom's bride's a white man. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> as close as you can get me to actually sing that song. Um, oh, Mr. Shelves, what a pleasure.
pleasure to see you. Is it? Is it though? My throat's dying. I see. I am well not at the moment too soon. A disaster has been averted, I'm glad to say. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great one-liner, my dear. The trial shall begin presently, Mr. Naryu Hodo, and I wish you the very best of luck. Okay, you're like... God, that's how you say that. <laughs> <laughs> you're like six I hours too late, bro, but okay. It's uh, just finished. I love this man, but I also despise... <laughs> What? No! <laughs> then my haste was in vain! Arg! It is you! Arg! Arr, look! Shoms! Uh, oh, excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have we met, sir? Oh, shit. Um, this is Mr. Natsume, the man you had arrested, Mr. Shoms? Oh, I see. I failed to recognize you at first. Mm. Our previous encounters have taken place in the gloom. At either of your bleak lodgings or that prison cell. I simply couldn't place that curious face in the light. You've seen a whole three Japanese people. <laughs> <laughs> Charming. <laughs> really, that's the best you could say. <laughs> this is all your fault, Herlock Shomps. You're the reason That's I it. had to go through this terrible ordeal. I'm gonna give you a piece of my mind. I'm going to stab you right now in this courtroom. My apologies, sir, but I assure you I have placed you now. You're the fellow who abandoned that poor young lady and ran off, are you not? Oh! He was scared. Yeah. He didn't know her. I would judge him more if, like, he knew her and ran off. True. And he was also British and, you know, like, didn't have to go to the police in order to get help. True. Yeah. Had you been taken to the hospital more urgently? Hmm. I feel perhaps she would have regained consciousness by now. Well, maybe you should stick to being a fictional detective. <laughs> oh. But it was unavoidable, I'm sure. We are but human after all. Anyone who have been shaken by such an experience. I do feel very badly about how I behave. Well, never mind now, then. What was it that you wanted to say to me, sir? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. Me. Nothing at all. Oh, 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 oh priceless. Oh, I'm sorry, really, but... Oh. Hmm. That was quite priceless. Or so such a thing. Still on the bright side, you've had an extremely entertaining experience without paying a penny. And it seems you were not even found guilty. Congratulations, you get to walk away from this encounter. But there was no bright side. Whatever do you mean, Mr. Natsume? He's still haunted by foreigners. <laughs> and a woman almost died. Yeah. Even after this, I'm... I'm still cursed by the spirits and and now by the Reaper. Huh. Lord Von Zeke's. Lord Van Bitch. <laughs> I haven't forgotten, you know, what facing that man in court means. Even if you're found not guilty, you're still doomed. I have to flee the country. <laughs> it, 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 it'll be alright. Oh, no, that's not me. <laughs> uh, it'll be alright, Mr. Natsume. If the Reaper appears trying to make trouble... 
I will protect you. I would pay oh. money to watch yeah. a Susato takedown. Not of me. <laughs> I spoke too soon. Susato, no! <laughs> uh, for the perfectly executed Susato takedown. Wow, we had to be the guinea pig for that shit. Much as I like she it. had to prove that she <laughs> could protect him. Okay. Much and as so I like she being... opened a can of whip ass on us. Yeah, she could have done it on Sholmes. That's all I'm saying. True, she could have done it on Sholmes, but will she? She's got, she? like, a crush on him, though. Yeah, like, fangirl crush. Yeah. Fangirl crush on Sholmes. Like, she's not gonna kick his ass. Ew. Unless he wants that. Okay. Much as oh. I like being turned on my head, a bit of warning might be nice next time, Mrs. Hathel. Consent no, there will never important. be a warning. Sato. Exactly. <laughs> and I don't consent. Down. So, Mr. Natsume, what do you intend to do now? You mentioned something about recounting your experiences to your friends back in Japan. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Yes, I, I intend to return to my homeland soon. Oh. Basically, so I don't die. <laughs> it has already been a year since I arrived here in Great Britain. I've visited universities, libraries, bookshops. I've been honored with the tutelage of professors. I've learned so much about the wealth of literature here and the city it has shaped. And I have come to realize that it is my calling to stay home and tell my fellow countrymen about it, and not die! <laughs> That's very touching, Mr. Natsume. Oh, perhaps less veiled terms. You wish to withdraw halfway around the world to escape the terror of the Reaper's Curse! Leave this poor man alone! That's not it at all! Okay, that's half of it. But the, the more I learn of literature, and the more this strange feeling claws at my insides, I feel compelled to return to my roots and attempt to pen a, my own. Oh, uh, I see. Work of literature by Sosek Sung. That'd be an interesting read. Yeah, um, I was plagued with them through high school. Oh. You read all of them? Not all of them, but um, they're very much a part of the crew. Oh, nice. And what about Miss Susato and yourself, Mr. Naruhodo? Sorry? What about us? We've been here a whole, like, three days. We're not leaving yet. <laughs> <laughs> Will you return to Japan alongside your moustached companion? Why or would we? Once again, it took us, like, 45 days to get here. We're not going home after three. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a week has not yet passed since we arrived in London. And only now does it feel as though we finally found our feet. Hmm. And you are accommodated in a hotel at present, are you not? That's right. Oh, we need to find lodgings before it bankrupts us. I've calculated we can only afford another ten nights before our entire budget is exhausted. <laughs> well then, you could take my lodgings. Oh! oh no, thank the... you. Fill <laughs> this room? Uh, but... Well, what it lacks in windows, it, it, it more than makes up with the floor and the ceiling and walls. Right. <laughs> it has walls, you guys. And of course, I'm happy to leave behind the accursed evil spirit. Oh my, an evil spirit? Can we have your cat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yes. Hmm. <clears throat> It tries to suffocate you while you sleep. It's it's an infallible wake-up call. We'll think about it, if that's alright. Perhaps I can offer a more uh, welcome alternative. Would you consider taking lodgings with me? No. <laughs> <laughs> Re 
really? I would, I would have been like, considering you just like straight uh, up. No. <laughs> no, I knew no, it was like, coming. Uh... <laughs> I didn't have to think about it. <laughs> well, the vacancy has conveniently presented itself. I've seen movies before. I was like, this is what's <laughs> happening. Um, so it is up to the attic, I might add. Are you sure it isn't just a storage loft? No, yeah, you'll be like Sonic the Hedgehog living in my <laughs> attic. I spoke with the landlady <laughs> this very morning in the matter of price. in the movie? <laughs> He's just living in that guy's attic? What? <laughs> I haven't seen that's, it yet, so... I haven't seen oh, you it haven't? either. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. This is well, like, is that what alert. happened? Spoiler alert, Sonic <laughs> lives in his attic. Okay! okay. Got it. Okay. Anyway. The only movie I have seen that has Sonic in it is <laughs> Pesky Rangers. And it's oh, ugly yeah. Sonic. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I have bad one. That's ugly Sonic. Sonic. We don't talk about ugly <laughs> Sonic. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, Chad is right. Chris Thorndike from Sonic X also had him in the attic. Yeah, it's true. That's a thing. Anyway, Sonic just likes attics. Okay. That's what we learned today. <laughs> and Iris is cleaning the room as we speak. You must come at once. I presume you have no luggage to speak of. Oh, this is simply wonderful. What an honor to be invited to... Invited to take... To be invited to taking lodgings in the greatest detective's office's attic. Wow, that's a sentence. <laughs> did I read that right? You Am did indeed read that started? right. Oh my god. Um, I... I'm too overcome for words. So, suggesting we look elsewhere is out, then. We have to do what she says. It's the law. I mean, if we say scheduled. no, she is going to take us down. Absolutely. Iris will prepare a welcome dinner this evening. Please cook for the ten-year-old. <laughs> and you must come, too, Mr. Natsume. I insist. I, I I don't know what to say, but thank you, and yes, even though you framed me for murder. <laughs> Wonderful. Then I'll go and complete the paperwork for your formal release, Mr. Natsume. Uh, that shan't take long. Somebody's happy. <laughs> I'm sorry, this 16-year-old no gets to live with her fictional detective crush like yep this She's is the best day right of now. her life yeah absolutely locum i i knew that you wouldn't let me down i'm truly delighted to have met you here in london likewise mr natsume it's been a privilege meeting you too it's a shame that we're going to have to say goodbye so soon mm. well I've come to realize that I belong in Japan. But Locum, we'll meet again one day. Yeah, I'm sure. And hopefully by then, I'll be a successful lawyer. I'm sorry, I've won too. How much more success can I have? Right. Hopefully by then, I'll be a successful author. And I will be there to witness all this blue. Well, my dear fellow, our carriage appears to have arrived. Shall we go, Mr. Naruhodo? Um, mm -hmm. I don't think we should leave behind that, though, but, uh, yeah, Mr. Sholmes. Get in the carriage. Bye. Yeah. Have candy. I have little doubt Mr. Natsume will be released in time for dinner this evening. What are we eating, by the way? Like, seriously, what I are mean, we burgers. Burgers, yeah, yeah. let's go. <laughs> he did say the ten-year-old was cooking, so... So fish and chips, or... Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, you know, like... A cookie. <laughs> yeah. 
Like, technically, Cereal. I've been to the UK, like, butter and chip sandwiches may be a thing. Um, and so, with Sosaki-san's innocence successfully established, we rode with Mr. With, uh, <laughs> we We're eating rode ice cream with for dinner. Shom to what was to become our new home. 221B Baker Street. Yay! God. And we lived happily ever after. We went. Oh Actually, my god, we are like Sonic. This isn't bad, there's a window. There is it's a window. Nice delivery service. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. 20th of February, 4.41pm, the attic room. The attic. There are two windows. We have a mop. Let's go. Oh, this. And a shovel. And a shovel. <laughs> to bury the bodies. Anyway. <laughs> uh, is it to be our new office? Is it to be our new office? Yes. Our what? <laughs> office? I rather like the sound of that. I really, I need them to write her better right now, please. <laughs> like, what the fuck is she saying? <laughs> Uh, me too. It's simply wonderful, isn't it? Like, every once in a while, they just throw a nonsense sentence in. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, she, no human person talks like this. Uh, I Sorry. hope you can see this, Kazuma. It's, Cries in weird sentences by Susato. <laughs> it's only a small step, but I'd like to think we're getting a little closer to your dream. So, my dear fellows, do you like the place? Uh, Mr. Oh, Schultz? what the fuck? He looks strapping. What, what's with the fua fua hair? Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, this is automation. Oh no, he's hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he's hot. Susato is over it's in the corner down. hyperventilating right now. It's fine. Um, you can see his whole forearms. It's, you know, too much. That's, that's... Oh yeah, I mean, ankles and now forearms? What is this sluttery? Like... <laughs> 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 uh, Mr. Schultz, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Only shoulders. Wait, only forearms. There we go. Maverick, no. This is a It's a delightful room, Mr. Shulms. I simply adore it. <laughs> Oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> mm. Good. I'm pleased to hear it. <laughs> Iris and I are delighted to welcome you. <laughs> Man is just standing there without the jacket. We instantly call him a slut. <laughs> 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 Gotta call it like we see it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, look, we know that we have a love of man whores like that. That's just the entire aesthetic here. It's our, it's our vibe. That's our brand. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, I hope everyone's hungry. I need <laughs> time for dinner. It's the second time I've cried on stream. <laughs> <laughs> Happy tears. <laughs> well, as soon as Mr. Natsume arrives, we have a lot to celebrate. <clears throat> Iris, you must, you must let me help you. All right then, Susie. You can be in charge of the salad. Splendid. What is a salad? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Hey, I'm... <laughs> what? 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 What?
why does this feel so threatening? Like, this is like that scene in the ultimate where everyone else leaves and we both look at each other like, so hey. this is a romantic moment. Um, We're alone now. <laughs> we project them. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, I'm just so tempted to be like, hey, this is Otome Holmes at your service. So, Mr. Noriko, how does it feel? I'd like to point out without any context, I don't want the answer to this question, but. Um... <laughs> Oh, you thought I was going in a romantic um, <laughs> way, but to have your own office in the capital. It would be better if you started taking more clothes off, but it's really <laughs> exciting, actually. I can't help wondering what adventures might await us. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, by the way, this is definitely a vest corset if you've seen one of those. <laughs> Those were precisely my <laughs> sentiments when I first established my office in these premises. Until I discovered the dark truth about the city of London, that is. Sorry? I know you can't stop looking at my floofy hair. London is a glorious place full of wonder, opportunity, prosperity, and mirth. But the brightest of lights. Past the darkest of shadows. Shadows? What do you mean? Well, I believe you're well aware of the mugginess that lies behind London's facade already. So, once again, Mr. Naruhodo. Milady, welcome <laughs> to London. Then the opening song plays. Kiss me, like... it's falling. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> of course, at the time, I had no idea of the significance of those words Mr. Sholm so casually spoke. I was so distracted by his forearms, I don't know what he said. <laughs> <laughs> that was very distracting. <laughs> sure was. <laughs> but it wasn't long before my, my turn came. <laughs> <laughs> to lift the facade and see the true depths of the murk that lay behind it. We have to we... finish this case. <laughs> Please, God, we free us from this the prison. <laughs> the end. Oh, we, we actually got through. <laughs> Okay, so um, now that we have very clearly met our um, new love interest uh, and his forearms, um, I can't wait for the love triangle to be established between us and um, Von Zeke's. Because oh, yeah. he'll see the error in his ways and then start wooing us. There we yeah, go. We'll like, babe, I can change. I can put <laughs> on top of the stand. Ooh. Ah. And then so what about Ka her, where does Kazuma's ghost fit into all of this? <gasps> it's a force. <laughs> <laughs> I this is my a boyfriend love square. and a my love other square. boyfriend, and this is my boyfriend's ghost. It's a love square. <laughs> That's what it is. Wow. Uh, cast your vote for your favorite ship in the comments below. Yeah. <laughs> So Sato gonna be mad jealous of us because we're the harem protagonist. I know. <laughs> I'd like to point out, we just stood there, like, ogling Mr. Sholmes with our dead boyfriend's sword on our hips, so... Oh, yeah. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> no shame. Hashtag no shame. Wow, I can't believe we, like, died at the end, but it's fine. <laughs> You see one forearm, and then you just lose it. Yeah, you know, like, look, 
we are those people in like the old movies where like you'd see uh like someone would walk by and they just yell whore that's <laughs> us <laughs> Yep. We saw Accurate. a forearm and we went, Horror! <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's us. Oh my god. I I was definitely looking at his forearms, his uh and his fluffy hair and uh whatever that chest corset thing was. There was somebody posted that on Twitter today and I was like losing <laughs> I was like, Oh wow, that's a thing. Anyway. Yeah. I stand now. You like uh, voicing him better now that you know he has a hot Otome side. Yes. I miss Maybe I should the switch dweeb. up. <laughs> he is such a dweeb. I'm how, a weirdo. How dare he flaunt his forearms in front of the 10 year old? <laughs> right? Sir, that is in- indecent. Indecent. Damn. A slut like behavior, and I will not stand (laughs) for it. In front of the children! (laughs) In front of my salad! In front of the salad, yes. In front of the salad. (laughs) How dare you, sir? This is a. This is a. Ye old Wendy's. (laughs) Sir, this is a Chili's. (laughs) (laughs) I can't. Lord. Uh, oh, lordy. Look, like, this one, we get to sit here and make jokes at the end of it because no one died. Yeah. So, you at know. least no one died. That's good. It's not one of those dark cases. We did have to put up with a lot of racism, but you know what? What's new? And at the end, we got a thirst trap. So, like... <laughs> Everyone wins, I guess. Exactly. Yay! Especially all of us who stand for arms. <laughs> I mean, look, I am going to say something like hot take, very questionable. I don't care. Uh, men when they roll up their sleeves, like, God, that's good nice. shit. That that's, is very that's some good, good shit. shit. Mm. Such good shit. Mm. Ten out of ten. Like, they are very holdable forearms. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Uh, Those look so heavy. Let me carry them for you. <laughs> <laughs> Your hands uh, are so good. Susato so over great. here trying to like eat dinner and we're just over here ogling his forearms. <laughs> <laughs> and she finally learned what a salad is. Yeah. Yay. Mr. Naruto in front of my salad. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. <sighs> wow, what a great stream, you guys. We did great. <laughs> We're doing super, you right, know. Yeah, you know. Look. Forearms, nature's love. <laughs> they... <laughs> yes. <sighs> I do have exactly. to ask. What the fuck is a love handle? I have heard it like three times now, and I still have no idea. It's like extra weight on your sides, but you know, like you're not fat though. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an acceptable amount of extra weight on your sides. That's what it means. Okay. Mm. Is that like you know, like yield literature, uh, pleasingly plump or whatever, like bullshit they yeah. just put in old mm. novels. Um. Yeah. 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 Basically, okay. that that it's just a more modern bullshit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Look, all I'm saying is that I would touch those. <laughs> yes, very touchy. <laughs> but the personality attached to those <laughs> arms, though. <laughs> he's right. a ten, but <laughs> he's a ten. <laughs> But he's also Sherlock, Herlock Sholmes. He's Sherlock Sholmes. And he will just fucking... <laughs> he will go feral in two yep. seconds. <laughs> Look, and you'd probably ask him to take more clothes off and he'd suddenly launch into a giant, like, theory of his that's completely wrong. Yes. <laughs> 
I love that very much, but I also hate it. <laughs> Look, he's living with a 10 year old. The 10 year old clearly needs a actual parental figure uh <laughs> she needs an adult and uh, the adult that she got stuck with well hmm. he's he a probably, 10 but <laughs> yeah he's a 10 but so is his iq <laughs> <laughs> oh shit ah. fired today <laughs> wow yes solid oh. <laughs> is accurate the and real I'm question saying. is so what number would you put him at? What number? Mm-hmm. Like, if oh. you had to rate him 1 to 10, like the whole package, personality and all, he actually does have to open his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's a lot of factors. <laughs> so many factors. <laughs> so many factors. Uh... I mean, his forearms are really hot. And so is his hair. <laughs> But every time he speaks, wait, wait a minute. Does this make him a himbo? <laughs> I don't know. There doesn't seem to be enough Girl respect in women juice in that. Like, yeah, he needs to. He, <laughs> he needs to drink his respecting women juice first, and I'll like think it, about it. Admittedly, yeah. we have not ever seen him be a dick to Susato. True. And he seems to really trust Iris, so we could see more himbo side. But at yeah. the moment, he doesn't seem to have enough drinking respect in women. Yeah. Yeah. But he could get there. He's like a himbo adjacent. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna put him at a three. <laughs> wow! <laughs> you asked for an answer! I mean, it's not wrong. <laughs> not a wrong answer. Oh. I love how he lost a whole seven points. <laughs> yeah, shit. For his personality. <laughs> um, um hmm. See, I'm struggling. Cause <laughs> he's, he's, he's severely fun to play. Just because how fucking weird he is. Um <laughs> I, I'll be a little nicer. I will give him a seven, but it's a light seven. It's borderline six, maybe five. <laughs> okay, <laughs> how, is, down it, the how is it seven, but it's five? Um, <laughs> he's a seven, but really he's a five. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to be nice, <sighs> but I do like his man corset. So fuck. <laughs> anyway. Else. Well, I just had to Google when duct tape was invented, and it hasn't been <laughs> inv- invented yet. So, wait, when was it invented? Uh, 1899, according to Wikipedia. Mm. Okay, so too late, early? What? Too, too late. We're too late. early in the timeline. Yeah. Oh well. So, um, we tried. I mean. Is there another adhesive I could use to make sure he doesn't talk? Gorilla glue? <laughs> See when that was invented. That was definitely <laughs> not then. I mean, was gum invented? You could put make him eat a bunch of gum so he can't really talk. Maybe just like stuff a cloth in his mouth or something. Like that's been invented. Uh, <laughs> suffocate him. Yeah, <laughs> this is what absolutely. I'm hearing. I mean, look, he's <laughs> eye candy at this point. Um, Gorilla Glue was made in 1994, so yeah, like, there's no way. I need ye old adhesives. Uh, ye old ye Gorilla old Glue. <laughs> yeah, ye old. Uh, all right. If I can't tape his mouth shut. We'll go with a five. Okay. Y'all are being too nice. Well, I figure I can figure out some way to make earplugs if those haven't been invented yet. Yeah. So even if he can still talk, I can't hear him. (laughs) Or you can play the foreigner card and be like, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Mm -hmm. Like, what? Exactly. (laughs) 
Mm. I would do it. <laughs> I would absolutely do it. I'd be like, uh huh, yeah. But what does that mean? And then I'm like, so... pre- and then start reading a book and tune them out. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I don't speak British. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I don't Smiley understand out. English. Smelly yeah. out there. I'm sorry, I don't understand your accent. <laughs> Okay, Earpu- earplugs are mentioned all the way back in the Odyssey, so... Oh. They have so, been... So, that's good. So I Iris use... events ye old soundproof chamber. There we go. Ye old soundproof <laughs> chamber. Love that. Love to see it. So, you know, like... I'll, I'll put him up to a six with that in yeah. mind. Knowing yeah. that I can at least block him out. Yeah. <laughs> Same. He would be horrifically um, insufferable in bed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, Anywho. He's a 10, but or, he's Sherlock Holmes. There could be that Moe gap. You never know. <laughs> what if he changes differently? Yeah, we'll find, maybe we'll find out in the future. In the adventure yeah. of the unspeakable story. In the world of fan. <laughs> Here we go. Um, all right. Y'all can so... look that up. Yeah. <laughs> Good uh, luck with that. Look, I'll, I don't care about the rest of him. I just want his forearms. Yes. <laughs> like, give me your arms, sir. What, you know, like, what they need do to do is, like... you bite your thumb at like... me, sir? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, just, like... Make a like steel wall with two uh, holes in it so he can put his arms through. Fine. Um... <laughs> Machine. Uh, all right. Uh, so <laughs> next stream, um, probably gonna be just as batshit crazy as this one was between <laughs> Ratatouille, um, and the thirst <laughs> that we uh... went into here over seeing forearms. Um... <laughs> yes. Uh, next stream is Sunday, 10 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Pacific. Um, if we decide to do an extra stream, um, we'll let you know on Twitter. Um, anything to announce? I have, I have two things I want to talk about real quick. Yep. Um, get your flu shot. It's mm-hmm. flu shot season, y'all. Um, I got mine today. Okay. Um, so Hi-yo. do that. And if you are old enough and are a, of or an American citizen, um, voter registration deadlines are coming up. Um, in Florida, the deadline is October 11th and in Oregon where I'm at, it is October 18th. Um, I posted a map of when those deadlines are to my stories. If you need to know other States, there are four that I can count that do election day registration. Um, but don't count on the fact that you live in one of those four because there's a shit ton of other States that, uh, require, so yeah, uh, please, if you aren't registered to vote, uh, double check your status. Um, you can go check your registration status at vote.gov. Hey. It's important, y'all. Very important. Especially if you are in the U.S., like, please. Yes. Vote. Mm-hmm. So that people like me don't have to deal with this. Um, also, now that I look at that map, I lied to you. There are five states that I ooh. can count. Uh, that do election day voting. Uh, you want to text me that map and I'll post it on Twitter? Yeah, I'll take a Yay. screenshot of it because it's on Instagram. Um, I will send it to you right now. Um, and along with the flu shot thing, remember COVID vaccine boosters are available. We have the bivalent uh, booster. So um, get protected. Yes. Uh, Mana, any announcements? Uh, everyone, please wish me luck because tomorrow they start sending the emails to see if we made it to the Idol Fest at all, Matt. So I'm very nervous. Um, all of the fingers so... and toes are crossed. Thank you. So uh, I'm gonna, like, okay, even if I don't, I, I'm planning to release, you know, special covers this year, but still, it would be great to perform at all, Matt. So, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Yay! 
All right. Um, so as I said, next stream is Sunday. Um, and I don't think I have any other. Um, that's wash all your hands. Watch, that's all, wear your folks. Masks, uh, get vaccinated. Watch Lemur's true life story of Ratatouille, and we will be back on <laughs> Sunday. So sorry. Have a good night, all. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>